Hello everyone. Um, very very cold here today. Um, forecast a cold snap um, for the next few days. Going to be the coldest weather we've had in five years. So I'm not really looking forward to that. Um, I will just say that um, Alfie's poorly again. He seemed to rally, and then yesterday he. Um, wasn't too well. Not sure how he's going to be today, but we'll, we'll see. They're going to um, start him on small. Uh, his antibiotics finished tomorrow. Steroid tablets finished yesterday. So they're going to um, continue his medication for another week, I think. Anyway, I've come on to give you um, a continuum of the Ashleen story. And I'll get on with that. I'm going to read some of it. From my notes um, because it's, it's the easiest thing for me to do um, today so it says Ashleen of course became pregnant and she had a little boy who I told you she called Luke and during the birth she was attended by one of the women who helped run the lodging houses and a boarder and this boarder was a very coarse Irish woman um, her favourite word was fecking, fecking this and fecking that and fecking children. You can imagine what the fecking stood for. Um, she had five children of her own, this woman. Um, and it says, um, as a, four, a five snotty nosed children bore testimony to her experience of looking after kids. Um, ailing children that were a nuisance um, and the miracle of the birth that preceded their being a nuisance was almost immediately forgotten so in other words she all this was sort of a matter of course for her with Ashleen it was no big deal and she was just a very matter-of-fact busybody who um, fucking well got things done so Luke, Luke was frail, he was a, a frail boy and despite being born with a call round his head, they're supposedly to bring good luck, aren't they? Um, yeah, Mrs Smith said, oh, he's going to be a lucky boy. Um, the call brings good luck to both the child and the mother. Mrs. Smith was very wrong. Life carried on much the same. Ashleen resumed her normal duties, which also included um, keeping Mrs. Smith's company whilst her husband was indisposed. Um, he frequented pubs, gambling houses, um, places of disrepute regularly. Um, and just as regularly taking the pledge at church to say he was going to go forgo all these pleasures um, immediately fall almost immediately falling off the wagon and going back to them so that was mrs smith's life um, mary um she was all, <coughs> almost 16 years of age and she worked in a bakery Rory remained at school, often losing time to care for his young brother Luke. I don't know why that would be, why, whether it was because Ashleen was very, very busy working or very, very busy with Mrs Smith. Um, Ashleen actually took to going out with these people also, leaving her children in the care of 16-year-old Mary. Um, the year 1947, New Year 1948, saw Mary, now 19, join the army. Rory, at 15, was working as a labourer. Um, Luke 
with over two years of age. Financially, life had improved a little for Ashleen. The family was fractious at the very least, but their finances had improved. Um, both Mary and, and um, Rory were bringing in money. Mary was still working. They still retained um, those rooms, although Mary was no doubt itching to get away and have um, a little bit of privacy, hence joining the army, which um, brought a sort of privacy, I suppose, and um, it was a career. Um, both Mary and Rory, although loving their mother, also made clear their resentment, resentment at their continuing circumstances. Mary's home visit, once she joined the army, was limited to Christmas only, with an occasional letter. So really, she was quite estranged from her mother. Um, Ashleen shrank. Physically and emotionally, her frailty was apparent. She became reliant on alcohol as self-medication and that was often in evidence. Um, accompanying her employers and her friend, Mrs Smith, Ashleen would visit the local public house. On one such occasion, Ashleen was helped home in a state of, in quotes, high disrepair. The following morning, after a long drinking session with her friends, there was only Luke and Rory at home at that time. The following morning, Luke was at work, um, Rory was at, Luke at work, so there was just Ashleen and Luke at home. So the following morning, after constant crying of an unattended child, Ashleen's landlady let herself in to the attic rooms. Ashleen was lying lifeless. Luke at her side, attempting to shake his mother awake. That was the short, sad life of Ashleen Rooney. An unremarkable woman, really in a very hostile world and a life ruined because of bigotry in Northern Ireland and the continuing feud between Catholics and Protestants which continues to this day. What happened to her children I will tell but Ashlyn's story, her own story is done. She was born in 1910. She died in 1948. 38 years on this earth, 20 of those years spent in misery and isolation. Um, I will say that the children came out of that life quite well. Mary in the army and eventually marrying, having a family of her own. Rory returning to Ireland. And Luke, the little boy, boy with a lucky call on his head, had a life that wasn't lucky at all. Um, his life was, he was a frail boy as I said, and he was left alone without a mother from the age of two and a half years of age, and nobody wanted to claim him. Neither Ashleen's parents who felt that they'd done their share and were ashamed of their daughter, neither the father of Luke, who was married and had gone back to Ireland. 
So that little bastard child went into um, a Bernardo's care home and had a frightful life. I will come on and give just a little bit more about the children, but that's the conclusion of Ashleen's life. As I've said, an un unremarkable girl who fell in love, an unremarkable woman who was left to care for these children, whose life was just unbearable. And so it ended at the age of 38 years. I'll be back later with something a little bit more uplifting and happy. Um, I hope you've all had and are continuing to have a very good weekend. And I'll speak to you a little bit later. Bye bye.